process, it imports a milling tool. That milling tool must be pointing down for the y-axis, so it comes in pointing down. Then, as we go to the process, notice this process is set up as a milling process. I want to close it for just a minute. I'm going to turn off Toggle Profiler. Because we're going to be machining on the y-axis, we need to change the coordinate system to the y-axis. Now when we go back to profile, or excuse me, back to the operation, the process, we're also going to change that so it knows to machine on the y-axis. Because it is a six-sided hex, we're going to tell it duplicate the toolpath five times at minus 60 degrees. So now on the contouring, all of the values are set. How do I know where this number really is? Well, we could put 125, and by highlighting the dialog box, then on the keyboard, notice my mouse is a pointer. On the keyboard, if I hold down the Alt key, notice the mouse just became like a picture box. And we can take a picture, just Alt click right on that face, and it loads the correct value for the finish cut. So here we're going to go ahead and close that. We're going to close that. We're going to use Profiler to help us define where we're cutting. So if we right click, and you can drag Profiler, just grab the grid lines, any one of those grid lines, and you can move it up or down the axis. But we want to position it precisely. So if we right mouse click, we can choose Profiler Depth, the profiler depth is not the depth we want to work at. So again, we will alt click. It loads the 55 millimeters in, and we click apply. Now the profiler is at the exact depth. We're going to start on that line, cutting in that direction. Then we will finish on this line, and I'm going to zoom in because we want to finish that right at the end. Let's go back over. To the start point, and actually we'll drag that in just a little past, and just rough mouse drag it. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out because we're ready to cut, and let's tell it do it. And so it automatically made the first cut, then duplicated it five times at minus 60 degrees. So let's go simulate this. We're going to rewind this. Now, we're going to ask it to stop before this new operation number five. So we're going to pull up the menu, we're going to tell it, stop before, op5, click OK. Then we'll go right back to this and tell it, use op stop. Now it will stop before op5, which means we can fast forward through the first operations, the first four operations. Okay, now it has stopped. Let's go ahead and slow it down a little bit. And we'll play it through. And so there goes the y-axis milling. And that is done. Deselect the operation. Let's turn off the simulation. Deselect the toolpath. This process will make sure it's highlighted so we can replace it. Let's go right back into the process library. Next time, we're going to go ahead and make C-axis revolver. So we're going to cut around that revolver using the C-axis. Let's click on it. It brings in two new tools. So a rough end mill, 40 millimeter in diameter. Notice it is pointing at the spindle. And the finish end mill, 25 millimeters diameter. Also notice it is pointing at the spindle because we're going to use the C-axis. So let's go to XY plane. That allows us to use the C-axis. Then we can just rough drag the profiler onto the area where we want to cut. It doesn't have to be positioned precisely. And the reason it does not is because the processes will store that they have that stored information. So it says rapid to this Z depth. Begin machining at that Z depth. How do I know that's correct? 
Well, we can alt click the face of the part and I'm on the wrong coordinate system so we must be on the correct coordinate system. Coordinate system number two, x, y point. Now we go back over to this. Let's alt click the front face and it's minus 60 millimeters. Perfect. And again the finished step, same thing. Alt click and it picks up. This will make three passes in the Z and it will leave half a millimeter stock per side. Then the finish will make one pass leaving zero stock and again it will be working on the XY point and because we want it to output C-axis rotations we've turned on rotary milling for both the roughing and finishing operations. So now if we go over here and tell it start here, we'll take a look, that is a climb cut direction and it's picked the profiler all the way around. Let's go ahead and do it. And so now we can see our cutting operations. So we'll rewind this. I'm going to change one setting here. So let's go to settings. Circular threads will allow the simulation to run much faster. Instead of drawing a helical thread, it will draw a circular thread. So let's zoom this up. Now let's speed this up a little bit. This time we're going to ask it stop before this operation number six. So here we'll tell it stop before six, OK, play. And so now the first five operations will run through very quickly. Notice also the threads are no longer helical. They're exactly circular. So the y-axis operation 5 is completed. Now we will slow down the rendering and we will begin running the rough milling of the c-axis. And notice it's doing rotary milling so the tool stays in place and the c-axis revolves. Here comes the finish end mill. Uh, and I see a mistake I made in the programming. Notice here there's a witness mark. What happened is when we cut this tool path, not the rough turning, because that left stock of 0.4 per side, but this finish turning, this finish turning operation, you can see it cuts that to zero stock right here, zero stock. So we need to change that cutting operation, the finish cut. We don't want to cut the outside diameter, so we'll just drag it until it stop over there on that face. Let's redo those operations. Now we'll go back to cut part render, the machine simulation of the part. And let's go ahead and speed this up. run it back through and this way we can verify that the finish end mill cleans up 100 percent on the c-axis milling. Now let's go ahead slow it down a little bit and we'll run the c-axis roughing c-axis finishing and it is now finished and notice now there is no mark the end mill cleaned up 100 percent of the tool path. Next we will move on to drilling these holes. Now because the part has eight holes spaced at 45 degrees all we need to do is drill one machining operation. So we're going to deselect or select these ops, these processes I should say. Then we're going to replace them. So let's go to the revolver and we'll bring in drill the bolt circle diameter. And it brings in a new tool. This is a drill 40 millimeter diameter, 180 included angle so it's a flat bottom drill and it's pointing at the c-axis right at the face of the part. Now how do we know this is a 40 millimeter diameter? If we go to plugins show position we can click this icon show the curve 
and we can click any one of these and what it's doing is it's showing us the radius value so it's a 20 millimeter radius 40 millimeter diameter we need to drill this from the XY plane so we'll switch to that coordinate system XY plane on the rotate tab for the process also we will switch to the XY plane now again we're going to set this to rotary milling because there are eight holes we will duplicate seven times minus 45 degrees and all of the values have been imported they're stored so let's choose that hole and do it and as we go through and take a look at this we're going to have to rewind this let's go to stop now at operation 8 so operation 8 click OK play it Okay, now it's stopping right before Operation 8, so let's slow this down a little bit, and now we'll play Operation 8. And the part is now finished. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and turn this off. We're satisfied with the toolpath. Deselect the operation. Clean up the screen delete this process you can press delete or you can just drag it into the trash can so let's save then let's go make a post processor g-code file so what I've done is I've selected the lathe mill turn metric posts and oh, maybe this a Fanuc 15T on a Wasino okay then we'll tell it where to save the g-code file in the folder we're working is fine save the starting program number eh, we'll make that one and then do the line numbering one by one 